I don't want to ruin your day here, my friend, but there's a couple of issues. Well, there's one issue which I want to bring to your attention, which nobody's really talking about. And if ever there is something that you should really be serious about, it's this. Monkeypox, M-pox, clade one or two. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Now, you see, what happened is, and what my fear is, is not necessarily monkeypox per se, because at least on paper, compared to SARS-CoV-2, it's bad. The lethality is nowhere to, to compare. Nobody wants to get it. Just the name. The first case was in 1958 among monkeys, and then in 1970, I think somebody in, in the Congo got the first case of it. But the name of it, monkeypox, it just envisions and it, it engenders this horror, this, I don't know, I think of those monkeys in the Wizard of Oz, you know, those horrible, these baboons flying about, spreading these pox like the purulent pustules, covering our bodies. And, and invariably, somebody will say, you know, I think we've got a vaccine for this. I think we have a vaccine. And then the World Health Organization might jump to attention and say, you know what, we might want to look into this. And then we go through this again. And then I ask myself, what have we learned last time? Because we have a number of issues that we've never resolved. Number one, what is your right as an American citizen to refuse a vaccine? To refuse medical treatment? What is your right? We've never, ever answered that. Jacobson against Massachusetts, the 1905 case, is all, Supreme Court case, is all but worthless because it never really dealt with anything, especially in view of the various rights that we have via incorporation by reference through the 14th Amendment. So we don't even know what today's standards would be. And that only dealt with a fine that was uh, uh, leveled against Jacobson, who I believe was objecting to the smallpox vaccine because of an adverse reaction that he had when he was previously inoculated before. So the issues were kind of different. But what have we learned? I don't know. What about the thousands of individuals who lost jobs, uh, military positions, uh, sporting uh, uh, um, scholarships and the like? Do we ever resolve that? I don't know. Do we ever deal specifically with a final review of our civil liberties that might have been trounced and destroyed by virtue of this jackbooted biomedical tyranny. No. What have we learned? I don't know. I don't know. Are we going to go through that? Could we go through that again? Absolutely. Would people be just as adamant in calling for massive, mandatory, sanction-connected inoculation and immunization? Absolutely. The trust the science signs that went out, the little thumbnails on Facebook with some reference to, I don't know what. We have to be careful in not anticipating awful things, not going crazy if somebody says the name Bill Gates. We've been through this before. I like proof. What I also like is lessons learned. And I would love to believe that we learned lessons and that we were very careful never to replicate the complete, in some case, truncation and eradication of individual rights that we saw last time, in some cases. And when you have people like our friend, Mr. Tampon Tim, when he was the governor of Minnesota, he absolutely held, had no mercy 
for anybody who dared to violate any kind of a lockdown order. But looked the other day way when it came to these ideas of streets and cities being destroyed and burned to the ground by virtue of these shock troops, these domestic terrorists, but violate that that you know lockdown, those those uh, those uh, stay at home orders or masks or whatever. Oh, I me, mean, he had no no uh, uh, sympathy whatsoever, no mercy. But if you were some BLM, Antifa, shock troop terrorist wanting to destroy Minneapolis, well, that's you know. That's just letting off some steam. And speaking of which, in a tangential issue, I wonder, I wonder how many of those individuals who most assuredly will cause significant damage to the great city of Chicago, I regretfully say, I hope it's not true, but if, if human interest and human behavior is what I think it is, will, will Kemala immediately call for their release their immediate release from the pokey, from the who's gal, from the gray bar in? Will they, Will she show that same desire to bond them out and to raise bond money as she did for those individuals in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, who were arrested for destroying that city, all in the theoretical and alleged protestations regarding that great American hero and that civil rights champion, Mr. George Floyd? I don't know. It's time to see what lessons we learned during the last lockdown, during the last period of that horrible, horrible period where we did, in many respects, I think there were some good people who tried to do their best, but there were, dare I say, politicians who, who, who waxed a bit totalitarian and a tad fascistic when they overreacted to crush and quash and destroy your individual rights, your individual guarantees, one would think, of freedom and liberty. What do you think? What do you think? Comment as you see fit. <laughs>